Okay, so you've got a scatter plot, and now you want to find your line of best fit. Well, in statistics, um, another name for our line of best fit is called the least squares regression line. And one of the things that we talked about in one of our other videos was that when, when, when we find this least squared regression line, what we're trying to do is find the squared residuals. We find the residuals and then we turn those residuals uh, into squares and we're hoping that we can minimize the area of those squares. So that's why we call this the least squares regression line. Sometimes you'll see it abbreviated as LSRL, but most of the time we just say least squares regression line or line of best fit. So I've got some data here. Um, got fat grams and calories for some different foods um, that, uh, that you can find at the grocery store. So 13 grams of fat. This particular product had 13 grams of fat and 410 calories. This one had 31 grams of fat and 580 calories. So I went ahead and created a scatter plot for this, uh, for, for this data set. And we're going to go ahead and use fat as our explanatory variable and the calories is our response variable. And once again, here is our scatter plot. I'm not going to label everything because I need, I need some space to do some work here. So how can we find the equation for this least squares regression line or this line of best fit? Well, the formula that we're going to use looks like this. This is y hat equals b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x. It kind of looks like slope-intercept form. If you remember from algebra, y equals mx plus b is slope-intercept form. So it kind of looks like that, but not exactly. The b sub 1 times x is kind of like the mx, and the b sub 0 is kind of like the b, the y-intercept. But in statistics, it's just slightly different. <clears throat> the b sub 0 is still the y-intercept, Y intercept, and the B sub 1 is still the slope. So how do we find those things? And in a different video, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the notation, but this should not just be a Y. This should be Y hat, this little carrot on top. Whenever you write an equation for your line of best fit or least squares regression line, make sure that you always put a hat over top of this Y or whatever variable you're using. Otherwise, um, you know, it's, it, the notation would be incorrect. And like I said, I'll talk about that at a different time. But how do I find these things? Well, let's start off by looking at the slope, b sub 1, right here. So how, what is the formula for b sub 1, finding the slope? Well, we take r, which if we remember, is our correlation coefficient, OK? And then we take s sub y divided by s sub x, which is our standard deviation. So you've got to know your notation. r is the correlation coefficient. s is the standard, no, the standard deviation. So we want standard deviation of the y variable and standard deviation of the x variable, or the explanatory on the bottom and the response on the top. Well, if we go to our calculator, <clears throat> I have already uh, put this data into my list, stat edit, and I've got it uh, over here in list number one and list number two. So oh, I think I've got one value incorrect. This is 13, and in my data set I've got 19. So I'm going to change this. I change this to a 13. <clears throat> That's going to change my uh, scatter plot slightly as well. So let me bring this scatter plot over, get rid of this one. You know, sometimes you make mistakes. When you make mistakes, just fix them. <clears throat> so here we go. I need to find the standard deviation for both variables. So I'm going to go stat and then over to calculate and use number one right here, one bar stats. And for my explanatory variable, that's in list number one. So I type in list number one by hitting second one and hit enter. And this S right here is my standard deviation. So let me bring this over. And for my explanatory variable, this S is what I need, 9.82. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for my response variable. 
pull the calculator back up. My response variable is in list number two, so I go stat over to calculate. Number one, one bar stats are one variable statistics. And instead of list number one, I hit second number two for list number two. And that's going to give me my standard deviation for my response variable. Let me highlight that one as well. So the standard deviation for my response variable was 89.8. Um, I'll draw some arrows here so we can remember. Okay, this one is down here and this one is up here. Now what I don't have is my R, my correlation. Okay, I need my correlation coefficient. So I'll go back to my calculator and I hit stat, go over to calculate, and I can either choose number four for linear regression or I can choose number eight for linear regression A plus BX. Now, I'm just going to give you a heads up. Eventually, this is what we will use and this is acceptable to find our line of best fit, our equation. But for right now, I want to show you how to find the line of best fit by hand. So the only thing I'm going to be using from this linear regression is the R, the correlation coefficient. So if I hit enter, and when you use your calculator for linear regression, you have to tell the calculator was my explanatory variable, and that's L1, and then comma. The comma, by the way, is above the 7. And then hit second number 2 for list number 2 for my response variable. When I hit enter, this actually gives me the, the equation for the line of best fit. But I'm going to save that for another video, and I'm just going to use my correlation coefficient. Um, because, again, I'm trying to show you guys in this video how to find um, your line of best fit by hand, which is something that you will be asked to do even if you have um, technology like a calculator or Minitab or something else like that. But you need to be very familiar with this formula and very familiar with how to find B sub 1, the slope, and how to find B sub 0, which we'll look at here in just, just one second. So I need to go ahead and find B sub 1. I need to find the slope. So let me put this in. Here we go. B sub 1 is equal to R, my correlation coefficient. And I'm going to go ahead and take it out four decimal places. 0.9666. Um, and I'm going to multiply that times the ratio of my standard deviation. Standard deviation of my response variable is 89.81. 89.81 divided by the standard deviation of my um, explanatory variable, which is 9.83. I'll round off the two decimal places. All right, give me a second here. I'm going to grab another calculator and multiply all this out. 0 0.9666 times the ratio of 89.81 divided by 9.83 and I get 8.83 for my slope. So when I do all the math, I get 8.83. Now, this is kind of encouraging because if you look at the calculator, the calculation when I did my regression, right here is the slope of 8.83. So you can see how doing this by hand and using technology should give you the same results. All right, so here's the slope. Now, how do I find my y-intercept? Let's move on to that. The y-intercept is b sub 0. So right here, b sub 1 is my slope, and b sub 0 is my y-intercept. Well, the reason why I found the slope first is because if you notice in the formula for y-intercept, I need to know what the slope is, okay? And this is just algebra if you think about it, okay? <coughs> so, how am I going to find the, the uh, y-intercept, b sub 0 right here? Well, let's plug everything in that I need. Do a little bit of math here. I've got b sub 0 equals y bar. Remember, y bar is the sample mean of my response variable. The sample mean of my response variable is right here. There's the sample mean of my response variable, uh, 590. Put that in, 590. 
minus b sub 1, which is my slope, and I know that's 8.83, right over there, 8.83, times the sample mean for my explanatory variable. And if I go back to my one bar stats, right there it is, my sample mean or my explanatory variable is 33.43. I'll round off the two decimal places, 33.43. Let's multiply here, 33.43. And what is that equal to? Once again, I'm going to go ahead and grab a different calculator and do the math. And when I get 590 minus the product of 8.83 times 33.43, I end up getting 249.81. So here we go. This is 200, mm, 294. I may have said 49. 294.81. And there is my slope. Now, again, if you notice, you come over here, follow the arrows. You can see that when the calculator did its regression, it got 294.76. This is slightly different. And the, the slight difference comes from rounding. In the calculator, it takes everything out as many decimal places as it possibly can. We rounded off 8.83, we rounded off 33.43, and so that's why this is slightly different. At this point in time, that's totally acceptable. You know, if I would have gotten 394, then I would have made probably a computational mistake. But 294.81 is close enough to this, and uh, we're good. So now, what is the equation itself? I found the slope, I found the y-intercept, but what is the equation? Well, the equation would end up being y hat equals, <clears throat> we go back up here, b sub 1, which is our y-intercept, which would be 294.81 plus b sub 0, or I'm sorry, b sub 1, which is our slope, times x. Here we go. Let's put the slope in there, 8.83 times x. And right here is my equation for my line of best fit. y hat equals 294.81 plus 8.83 times x.